So far in our study of spectroscopy, we've looked at transitions between rotational energy levels, vibrational energy levels, and also electronic energy levels. There are two other kinds of spectroscopy we're going to talk about, and this is has to deal with transitions between spin states. Recall that electrons have a spin, and when placed in a magnetic field, these spins that are normally degenerate in energy are split. And one can then look at spectroscopy, look at transitions between the individual spin states. That's for electrons. We'll also talk about nuclear spin states. So things that we talk about electrons, well, change the sign to get positive, go in the nucleus, and everything we say about one is true about the other, more or less. All right, so let's first consider uh, electron spin resonance, or ESR. That's transitions between spin states within one electronic state. So we're not going vibrational, rotational, electronic, or anything. We're just looking at the spin system. Now for a single electron, you can calculate that the change in energy, or the splitting between spin states, is given by, this should look very familiar, a G factor, the nuclear or sorry, this is the Bohr magneton, this is the electron Bohr magneton, the magnetic field, magnetic quantum number. Exactly the same thing that we talked about when we talked about Zeeman splitting, except now we have different numbers. Let's look at that in a little more detail. Let's look at, for example, the energy of those spin states as a function of magnetic field B. And when the magnetic field is zero, we have and let's consider the case where s is equal to one half. So we have m sub s can be two values, plus one half and minus one half. So a single electron, a single unpaired electron, initially those two values, m sub s equal plus one half and minus one half, they're equal energy. But now, as we increase the magnetic field, the splitting increases, it's proportional. So increased magnetic field, one energy level will go up proportionally with B, the other energy will go down proportionally with B. And here's the unperturbed energy level here. Let's take this particular value of B, that's a particular value, and so this energy separation here, delta E, will just be the G factor for the electron times the Bohr magneton times the magnetic field times m sub s. Recall that the higher energy level, well, electron is negative, so like we did for Zeeman splitting, splitting, this will be m sub s equal plus one half, and down here m sub s equal minus one half, and this energy level separation should be the same here. And when we go from minus one half to plus one half, all right, if we go this transition, then the change in energy will be GE beta B M S. All right, now GE, as we said for Zeeman splitting, is approximately equal to 2 for just an unpaired electron hanging around a molecule, approximately equal to 2. The Bohr magneton, remember, recall that the Bohr magneton is equal to 9.27 times 10 to the minus 24th joule per tesla. This is the magnetic field experimental parameter and m sub s is that. What you can do is put in some energy and when the energy just equals this energy level separation you can have an electron go from a low energy spin state to a high energy spin state and that's called electron spin resonance. We call it resonance for reasons which we'll talk about when you talk about NMR but just let's use that term for now without knowing quite where it comes from. Now, delta E can be represented as h nu or h bar omega. So we can talk about a certain frequency and a certain magnetic field. And the proportionality constant will just be g mu m sub s over h. So that's in a nutshell what electron spin resonance is. And we'll talk in just a little while why that's useful for chemists.